Today's reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 through 10. The whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these 40 years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs, flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper, and you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. This is the word of the Lord. You might have been able to discern hearing my voice. I've been suffering a bit of a cold these last couple days. I'm on the mend. I'm on the upswing. But I appreciate your prayers here today to, for God to give me the strength to help me get through this message. So let's pray. Uh, Father God, we love you. We serve you. We thank you, Lord, for this time that we have to open up your word this morning. And we pray that as we open up these words, that, Lord, that they would speak to our hearts, that they would speak to our minds. Uh, Lord, that you would give to each of us just that right word that we need to hear, that right word uh, from you to go out from this place and to live out this week. Uh, bless this time. In Jesus' name, amen. So the reading is the appointed reading for Thanksgiving Day, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 through 10. The book of Deuteronomy, it's the last of the first five books of the Bible, commonly referred to as the Pentateuch. These five books that were written by Moses, sometimes referred to as the law, they tell the story of creation, the story of the calling of Abraham and his descendants, of Jacob, of Joseph and his 12 brothers, tells the story of slavery in Egypt and how God called Moses through the burning bush and Moses would go back to Egypt and lead God's people out by God's strength and by God's might. He would lead them into freedom out into the desert wilderness. And that's where we pick up the story today. The people have been wandering in this desert wilderness for 40 years. They're about to enter into the promised land. Moses is about to pass the baton on to Joshua, who is going to lead God's people next. Uh, Moses himself was not going to enter into the promised land, but he wanted to leave these last words with the people. In many ways, the last will and testament that he wanted to give them to remind them where they had been, you know, what God had brought them through, and how they would enter into this new land and take hold of the promise which God had given to them. So the title of today's message is Marks of Discipleship. Uh, a number of different marks that I have pulled out, marks of discipleship that I pulled out from this text, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 through 10. So let's open up the word and see, you know, some of these marks that God gave or Moses gave to the Israelites uh, and that God gives to us here today. So chapter 8, verse 1, 
The whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. The one word that stands out in this first verse is the word whole. He doesn't say keep a quarter of the commandment. He doesn't say keep half of the commandment. He doesn't say keep three quarters of the commandment. He says keep what? The whole commandment. The complete commandment. So the first mark of discipleship to explore today is that of complete obedience. When we seek to follow Jesus as our Savior, as our Lord, we commit our whole selves to him. All of our time, all of our treasure, all of our talent. Lord, we give our, li- we give our lives unto the Lord completely, fully, and holy. There is nothing that we withhold from him, committing everything. So the first mark, complete obedience. Moses goes on to say, you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. The thing that stands out in this verse for me is that Moses says, you shall remember. The second mark of a disciple is that of being a learner. When we talk about remembering, what do we remember? Well, two ways in which we learn. We learn from the mistakes of others, or we learn from our own mistakes. The mistakes of others or our own mistakes. Which way would you rather learn? To learn from the mistakes of others, right? And, and God has given us his word. And there we read the stories of all the great patriarchs of, of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. And we read about David. We read about the disciples. And there were times where they lived obedient, completely and fully to God's will. And there was blessing that resulted from that. But there were also times that they went their own way. They lived in disobedience, and they suffered the consequences thereof. So a disciple at the heart is one who is a learner, one who seeks truth, one who seeks knowledge. At the heart, at the root, every problem that we have is a God problem. You you have a financial struggle. You have a relational struggle. Seek what God has to say about those struggles because God has something to say. God wants to speak into that area of your life. A big reason that we struggle in a lot of areas of our life is because we keep God out of those areas. We give God, you know, going back to the whole idea of complete obedience, you know, maybe in terms of my time and management of my time, I put God I bring God into that, and I manage it in my time in a godly way, but then when it comes to my marriage, I don't think much about God and what God has to say about my marriage, and there are struggles in my marriage because I've taken God out of my marriage relationship. So how do we seek God, God's word? How do we seek God's wisdom? How do we seek God's will in every area of our life? Be a learner. Verse 3. He humbled you, God humbled you, and let you hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. So the first thing, the first word that stands out here is the word humble. There's actually two marks of discipleship I'm pulling out of this verse. Uh, A disciple is one who is humble. But we are a prideful people, aren't we? We are self-reliant. The mantra that we learned growing up is if you put your mind to it, you you can do it. You can do whatever you want to do. But what does God's word say? You know, God's word says, with man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Paul says, I can do all things through Jesus Christ who gives me strength. So our confidence, our pride, 
If we're, go, we're to boast, it's not to boast in our strength. We boast in the Lord. Our pride is in the Lord. But we humble ourselves realizing that we are sinners, that we are weak, that you know, there are some challenges that we face in life that no amount of money is going to buy our way out of. That there's no amount of ingenuity or willpower that is going to overcome. We trust and we rely upon the Lord, not our own strength. So the third mark of discipleship is humility. The fourth one is, here we read, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Jesus would later quote these words when he was tempted by Satan in the desert wilderness. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So the fourth mark of a disciple from Deuteronomy chapter 8 is a disciple is one who treasures the word of God. Do you treasure the word of God? I've heard this quote before. A Bible that is worn out is the sign of a person who is not. A Bible that is not worn out is the sign of a person who is. As God's people, we treasure his word. We open up his word. Do you open up God's word on a regular basis? That's what we're doing this morning. We're opening up God's word, looking at what God's word has to say. But on your own personal time, do you take that time to open up the word, to, to memorize God's word, the treasure in your heart? Every week here at Good Shepherd in your worship folder, there is a verse of the week, and you're encouraged to memorize that verse each and every week. And think about this. If you memorized a verse a week, that's not that hard to do. You know, if you just, each day, five days a week, you write down that verse five times during the week. It's an easy way to memorize it. If you memorize 52 verses, that's 52 weeks in a year, that's a whole lot of scripture that you would take to heart over the course of one year. Imagine compounding that one year, two years, three years, four years. Do you treasure God's word in your heart? And the second thing is, are you opening it on a daily basis? You know, when, when, you have, when you're stressed, do you collapse on the couch with a glass of wine? Or do you go to your study and open up God's word and see what God's word has to say about those stressors in your life? Do you treasure the word of God? It goes on, verse 4, your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these 40 years. This is an amazing thing. This is a miraculous thing. These people are walking through the desert for 40 years. You know, I wear a pair of shoes, and in about a year or two, those shoes are worn out, and I need to replace them. But here, you know, talking about God's people, 40 years, they walked in the desert, and he says their clothing did not wear out. God provided in a miraculous way, which points us to the, the next mark of a discipleship. A disciple is one who fully trusts in God to provide. A disciple is one who fully trusts in God to provide. The question I have for you this morning is this. If you could do something for God that you would know that you could not fail, what would that be? If you could do something and know that you could not fail, what would that be? And if we have a vision that is a God vision that's from God, and we live in obedience, we may not have all the answers. We may not always have everything by sight in place, but we, we take the step, we take the leap, knowing that God will provide. What was it that, you know, why, why would these people, the Israelites, walk into a desert? They did it because they had trust and depended upon God to provide. They knew that God would come through and that he is true to his promises. Do you fully trust in God to provide for you in every way? Verse 5, know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. We see the word discipline here. You think of in terms of physical fitness. You want to be physically fit, you would have a discipline pl 
plan, a, a regimen, if you will. Uh, you'll make sure to have a diet to eat right. You'll also have a plan for exercise. And you follow that regimen to become physically fit. Well, God calls us to spiritual fitness as well. And do you have a plan you know, that you have? Do you practice spiritual disciplines? Again, going back, do you have a personal devotion time where you're opening God's word regularly on a daily basis, a regular time of prayer that you meet with God? You know, you're here this morning. That's a spiritual discipline. Being in worship on Sunday morning, the third commandment is honor the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Uh, you set aside Sunday morning as a time to worship the Lord. There's a discipline, there's a habit that goes along with that. But there's other disciplines as well. The discipline of service, for example. Using your spiritual gifts, using the talents that you have for the kingdom, whether it's serving within the church or serving outside in the community, you know, as the light, sharing your gifts to bless others. Practice discipline in your life. That's a mark of a disciple. Verse 7, the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains and springs, flowing out in the valleys and the hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. What do we have there? A picture, right? It's words, but as you read through those words, a picture comes to your mind. It is a vision. It is God's vision for God's people. So the next mark of a discipleship of discipleship is that a disciple lives with kingdom vision. Not a bigger church, but a bigger heaven of marriages reconciled of addictions that are overcome why do we do what we do it is because of the vision of the kingdom you know, again going back to the israelites as they came out of egypt why would anyone willingly endure 40 years in the desert it was because of the vision of something greater. And do you have that kingdom vision for your life as a servant of God? When Jesus says, I've come that you may have life and that you may have it full, do you have a picture in your life of what that abundant life looks like? Not just your personal life, but for our church as well. Do we as a church live with a kingdom vision? I, I believe that one of the reasons that the church in America is so frail is because we don't have a God-sized vision. Now, our vision oftentimes is survival more than anything else, but God's vision for his church is not survival. It is so much more than that. It is a kingdom vision, and a disciple is one who captures that kingdom vision. The last verse here, you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. This is the last verse, and it's appropriate to end with this thought on Thanksgiving Day weekend. Here he says, you shall bless the Lord. So the last mark of discipleship that we, we gather from Deuteronomy chapter 8 is that a disciple is one who practices gratitude. Gratitude towards God. We've come here today to offer our praise and our thanksgiving to God, the one from whom all blessings flow. We recognize that everything we have in our life comes from him. Every gift that we have, nothing that we have, have we accomplished on our own apart from God. Most importantly, we've been given the gift of salvation, what Jesus won on the cross of Calvary through his death and through his resurrection. That salvation is not something that we accomplished on our own, but something that he accomplished for us. We live not out of obligation, not out of duty, but we live out of gratitude and thanksgiving for all that God has given to us. There's gratitude in our hearts, 
even though life may be tough, even though sometimes it may be a struggle to discern the things that we have to be thankful for as a disciple, no matter the circumstance, in all things, I've learned the secret of being content, and I can give God thanks in all circumstances because I know that every blessing I have comes from him. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, we praise you for your goodness. We thank you for calling us as your followers, calling us as disciples. And we pray, Lord, that as we think about the marks of discipleship, that we would live out those marks uh, by your grace, by the strength of your spirit, that we would have the courage to follow you wherever it is that you lead us, just as the disciples uh, followed you, left their nets behind, just as the Israelites left their slavery in Egypt to go out into that desert. Uh, but Lord, it was all with the vision of the promise that you give. And give us that heavenly vision. Give us that kingdom vision. Now, in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. As we conclude our time together here today, we take this opportunity now to bring our tithes and our offerings onto the Lord.